9-11 a rigged deal or what did it really happen the way they said or whatever? That's not the topic of the show. So we're not going to even go there. We're going to just talk about safety, the proud safety of being an American in America in the really safe country that we live in and um, basically uh, safety in Los Angeles. You know, in a nutshell, is what this is going to be. It's not going to be about air aviation safety or airplane safety or anything or sexual safety like wearing a condom before you have sex or anything like that or during you have sex or safety issues concerning when the condo breaks which they do trust me I've had condoms break on me before but that we're not going to talk about that type of safety we're not going to talk about dog poop safety yeah you can go on some hikes here in Los Angeles and uh, you know you will end up stepping in dog poop like you'll get in your car or something after you go hiking and you'll notice that your car smells like dog crap and you'll wonder why and you'll look at your floor mat and it has dog crap on it that you brought in from your foot from the park that you went to but that's that's a different topic that's a different show I mean I can go on and I would probably it would be best uh, to do that type of show in the park you know kind of fitting where it belongs you know, in the right set. So basically, uh, uh, safety in LA, and I'm not going to get into renting apartments or apartment safety or uh, any of that stuff. Um, basically, I'm just going to talk about safety in LA, you know, basic safety in LA. So um, there's different levels of security that you need to be on when you're in different parts of the city. So some parts of the city, you would probably want to have a gun on you and you would want to have a Kevlar vest. And you might even want to have a couple people with you. I mean, that might just not be enough having the personal protective equipment like that, the PPE. You might even need to have a couple extra people that have that too and radios and bulletproof doors and all that stuff. But it just depends on the area you're at. So basically that will be kind of the theme for a while. Um, so like where I'm at right now, you can tell that I'm relaxed. I'm holding this camera. And, um, you know, I had one person walk by earlier with an attack dog that could have bitten me, but it didn't. You know, and then um, like a couple weeks ago, like a half mile from here, uh, a couple people got shot and stabbed to death. You know, but that was a couple of weeks ago and it wasn't me, right? Because I'm still making this video, so what do I care? But, you know, it just depends on the area uh, where you live. You know, uh, some areas are safer than others in L.A. And, and you have to determine for yourself where that might be. Uh, they have a L.A. A crime maps. It's a CompuStat crime map, they call it. You can go to LAPD.com, the Los Angeles Police Department, and they have a website that will link you to the CompuStat crime maps, and then you can look at the crime maps and determine from that, like, where the most violent crimes happen, where they have the most type of robberies and all that stuff, where they have the, the most type of uh, carjackings and all that stuff, uh, holdups. Uh, bank robberies, rapes, and all that. And <clears throat> so the CompuSat crime map gives you a general idea. And then also the uh, LA Times has a, uh, uh, that's a newspaper in LA, coincidentally, that has the same name. And I think they have it in English now. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, that basically tells you uh, from their crime map and all that, it's called crime mapping. Um, from the LA Times online, it's hard to do with the the, the uh, paper. Uh, y you get an idea from that, you know. And then, uh, so basically, like um, some things, like uh, obvious, is like uh, you know, you go into a neighborhood and you see a bunch of graffiti and all that stuff. Um, 
you know, I can't really uh, read it and all that stuff, but these gangs like communicate uh, by uh, sending messages to each other with graffiti and everything. And I don't really, I don't know how to understand that language and all that, but they have like their own little language and stuff. And it means that they're just in the neighborhood. They're just kind of letting you know. And then you have to determine you know how safe that neighborhood is and i don't know if that has anything to do with safety or not how many gangs are in a neighborhood i mean i have no idea maybe it would be safer if you're with that gang maybe you'd actually be safer with a gang in the neighborhood i mean i i, I really don't know you know and then um also it depends on your lifestyle like if you're if you're doing drugs and you're selling coke and all that stuff uh, you're going to be more likely to have things happen to you than if you don't. So regardless of the neighborhood, and then also you can have like a overdoses, you can have a drug overdoses and stuff like that and other problems, and then that could affect your safety, and that's just from personally uh, using drugs yourself. So, you know, that's another safety thing to consider. And then also when you're buying the drugs, you don't know if they're cut with other drugs, or how good a quality they are if you're buying street drugs and all that so but pharmaceutical drugs there's a hundred thousand people that die a year in the united states from pharmaceutical drugs taking them as prescribed anyways <clears throat> but that's another story So uh, safety, uh, basically, that's a little bit more. And then also you have to, your neighborhood, you kind of want to be aware of your surroundings. And then I don't really have one of these. They call it a gut instinct or something like that. I think that's for other people. I've never really been in touch with myself. And I don't know what that really is. But theoretically, you have like this instinct, this gut instinct that kind of tells you about whether you feel safe about a situation or a particular environment you're in, uh, something like that, this uh, gut, gut instinct. And theoretically, you listen to that, and then that'll tell you uh, if you're in a safe situation or not, which I really don't, I have no idea. I don't, I don't really know about that. But, um, but I guess that could be a possibility if you have something like that you could listen to within yourself, maybe your own... Um, Maybe your own, uh, your gut instinct or your own sick and twisted, perverted uh, inner child and listen to that or whatever, you know, and the inner child will tell you, oh, here we have a little. Yeah, I don't know what that means. I don't really know what that means. So anyways, uh, safety and then, so you got to kind of be aware of your surroundings. And, uh, you know, um, some parts of Los Angeles, you probably don't want to run out of gas. So you want a decent running car and you want to make sure you have plenty of gas in it. You don't run out, out of gas in a different part of town. And then uh, some parts of town, I think if you... If you look different than the other people, you kind of stick out like a sore thumb. And uh, you don't like blend into the environment. You're like not part of the scenery and all that. Then it, it's a possibility that something would be more likely to happen because you don't really fit in the environment. You don't look like you belong there. And then people kind of pick up on that and they might attack you because of that. So... Anyways. It's like from here up, so she can, I've already asked, and they can pick it out. So, um, yeah. And then like for their example, like that dog was supposed to be on a leash, it wasn't. Luckily it was a friendly dog, but it could have attacked me or whatever. But people are just so freaking selfish. All they care about is their own freaking selves. That's all they freaking care about. They're just me, 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 me. Everybody's freaking selfish to the core. They won't let you in traffic. They won't merge. They just, all they care about is number one. And this whole country's gotten worse. But that that's part of the safety issue, too. They don't care, really. I mean, 
a lot of them, if they see you wounded or getting robbed or shot at or something, they're like, oh, well, that's not me. So <laughs> don't expect anybody to come to your rescue is what I'm getting down to with that. So it's basically, um, yeah. Don't, don't think that some magical superhero is going to come out of the woodwork and help you because you're in distress. Because that's the human or the good or the kind thing to do or you saw it on TV with some <clears throat> superhero.